This video is on trends of the periodic table, the size, and reactivity. So on the periodic table, our elements are arranged according to their atomic number. And as we go across and as we go down, there are different properties that change. So there are trends, and our trends increase and decrease depending upon the trend that we are looking at. So to better understand trends, we are going to draw Bohr models for four of our atoms. We're going to draw Bohr models for hydrogen, for lithium, francium, fluorine, and helium. So take a moment to go ahead and draw those Bohr models of those atoms, and that's going to help us understand our trends. So when we look at our Bohr models, we can see that we have hydrogen here, one ring, one lone electron on the outside. As we go across, we've added another electron to make helium. Moving down, we have lithium. Lithium has its inner ring full one ring on the outside with one electron. And as we go across the periodic table, we add a proton and an electron every time. And we get to fluorine. Fluorine has its inner shell filled, but its outer shell has seven, and it wants one more to get eight. As we go across the periodic table, my atoms start to want to get more and more electrons. Here, fluorine very badly wants to fill the hole that it has, right here in its outermost shell. Because that, it continues to hold its electrons closer and closer to the nucleus. So as we go across our periodic table, our size decreases. And it decreases because our nucleus is holding onto our electrons closer and closer and closer. As we can see, as we go down our periodic table, from hydrogen to lithium all the way down to francium, I've added another ring of electrons every single time. Therefore, as I go down my periodic table, my size increases. Now size has everything to do with every other single property of the periodic table. The size and its location of its electrons determine all the trends. So reactivity. Well, as I'm going across the periodic table, I'm adding an electron every time. As I get really close to here, I just need one more electron. And if I just need one more electron, I'm going to be very reactive to get that electron. So at the same time, all the way over on the left-hand side of my periodic table, I have lithium that just has one valence electron. It, too, is really apt to give up that valence electron, so that way its outer shell is empty. So reactivity is going to depend upon filling that outer shell or getting rid of all the electrons. So reactivity in the middle of the periodic table is low. Reactivity as we go down our periodic table, I guess we'll go back to this, is low in the middle, but is high on group 1 and 17. It's low or zero on group 18. Because those are our noble gases, and noble gases, like helium, have that full outer shell. Now as we go down our periodic table, as we go down our periodic table, my size gets much bigger and bigger and bigger. Therefore, those valence electrons are further and further away from my nucleus. My nucleus can no longer hold on to my valence electrons on the outside, so they're really easy to fall off. And therefore, as I go down my periodic table, my reactivity increases dramatically. And we'll watch a video 
of our group one metals reacting with water and see how violently francium reacts compared to something like sodium and lithium. So to summarize, as we move across the period, our size decreases since our atoms hold electrons closer to the nucleus. As we move down a column, the size increases because the atom adds an energy level ring each time we move down. So with each period we go down, we add a ring. So let's look at our periodic table. Which is bigger? We need to find lithium and rubidium. They're both in group one. And if we take a look, lithium's at the top and rubidium's at the bottom. So as we go down a column, we get bigger because we've added a ring. So rubidium is bigger. Now going across, we have sodium and chlorine. We said as we go across the period, our size decreases. So sodium starts off large and then it decreases as I get closer and closer to chlorine. So that means sodium is going to be my bigger atom. Reactivity is a little trickier. We have the highest or largest reactivity in groups 1 and 7 because group 1 has one valence electron and 17 just needs one more. It's lowest in group 18 due to its full octet and has a middle amount of reactivity in the middle of the periodic table. As we move down a column, the reactivity increases. Since our electrons are so far away from the nucleus, it cannot hold on to them. So which is more reactive, lithium or rubidium? Well, rubidium is down at the very bottom of our periodic table, one up from francium. Therefore, it has lots of electrons shielding it, shielding our nucleus, so that outermost electron is going to just fall off. So it's more reactive. Looking at sodium or gold, gold's in the middle of the periodic table. It's very stable. Hence why we have lots of jewelry made out of gold and other parts that we use on a daily basis. It'd be pretty bad if that was uh, reactive. So something like sodium, which is in group 1, has one valence electron. That's going to be much more reactive because that outermost valence electron can pop off very easily.